Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Smitha. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get time series data off of a website and also how to plot it. Now, there's a lot of videos out there which make use of Python to do web scrapping and all that, but I haven't actually seen one which uses it for using the CoinCap API, which I'm going to show you guys how to use and also how to plot time series data. So it's definitely going to be an interesting video. Uh, it's going to be pretty simple to follow along. All you need is some really basic Python programming knowledge and the link for the Google Colab is going to be in the description box below so you guys can click on that and follow along. Before we get started, I actually want to give you guys a little bit of information on what time series data actually is. I, I just went on to Wikipedia and it defines time series data as a series of data points in a timely order. If you think about it, a lot of data sources are time series data. So this is probably going to be one of the most common types of data that you're going to deal with if you're working within machine learning and data science. So it's really important to know how to make use of this kind of time series data, how to acquire them from a website and also how to plot them. So I hope this video is going to be really helpful for you guys. Without any further ado, let's get started. This right here is the CoinCap API documentation, which we are going to be making use of in order to retrieve uh, Bitcoin price data. There's a bunch of different request types that we can actually use, as you guys can see, but we are going to be making use of this right here, which is assets history request type. The reason why is because the response for this request is exactly the type of data we need. This type of request uh, returns a price in US dollars of uh, the cryptocurrency that we're looking for, in this case, Bitcoin and also time. So this is perfect for what we need. For this request, we need to uh, key in certain parameters, right? For the first thing is ID. And in this case, we're going to use Bitcoin. So the ID value for this is Bitcoin. If you are looking for other types of cryptocurrencies, you can uh, use that in place of Bitcoin. Next up is also the interval. So the interval as you guys can see, M1, M5, that's basically one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes. So at what interval do you want to get the price of, uh, for example, Bitcoin? I'm going to stick with uh, one day. So we're going to leave the interval as D1. Another key that we need to include is actually the starting and ending point of which we want to collect the data within. So the starting point and the ending point. Uh, it says that it's optional, but actually you should definitely use this or else the number of data points that you're going to be getting is going to exceed the maximum limit. So it's really important to actually use the starting and ending point. So guys, this is the Google Colab, which includes the code for us to retrieve Bitcoin price data off of the CoinCap API. Let me go over the code a little bit so that I can explain to you what's happening. This first box of code is very similar to what we saw on the CoinCap API, but I've made some changes to it. Uh, let me start off with the type of libraries that we're actually importing. So the request library is really important because we're actually using an API and we're trying to get data from a website, right? So that's where the request library actually comes in. CSV, because I want to actually store the data that we're going to be getting into a CSV but you don't have to import this if you don't want to. Also, another thing is we are importing JSON. The reason being is because the type of the data type that we actually get from this CoinCap API and any most APIs in the internet is you get a JSON type. So the variable that you guys see over here, which is JSON underscore data, that contains all of the data that uh, our request actually has gotten from the API and it is contained in JSON format. Now, to give you guys a better understanding of how that looks like, let me actually print out this JSON data variable. As you guys can see, it's, uh, it's not great to read. I mean, it's not in any like table format or anything. So we really need to change that. And also, as you can see, we need to get rid of that data keyword basically at the beginning because we don't really need that. So that's what the next line of code is for. We are storing only the stuff that we need into the new variable Bitcoin data. And mind you, this is still in JSON format. 
So we're going to run that. And now we're actually going to convert our data into a data frame, which will make things much, much easier and way more easier to work with. So what is a data frame? A data frame is actually a two dimensional labeled data structure with columns of different data types. You know, you can think of it as kind of like a table almost, and it is the most commonly used object in pandas. So pandas is a library that deals with data frames and all of that. So that's what, that's why we are importing pandas and then also converting our Bitcoin data into a data frame. So that's what that, that whole line of code is doing. And DF is a variable which contains our data frame. Let me also print DF so you guys can see, get a kind of idea of how our data frame actually looks like. So as you guys can see, there is four different columns. The first column is just an index column and we have the price in US dollars as the second column and the third column is Unix time and the last column is date. So now that we've actually gotten our Bitcoin price data from the API and we have also stored that into a data frame, let's go ahead and try to plot this. This next line of code, which is, so let's actually go ahead and give it a try and see if it works. As you guys can see, we have actually run into an error. We have run into a type error and it says no numeric data to plot. So once we have gotten this type of error, we can kind of get an idea that, okay, somewhere in our data frame, one of the data types is not right. You know, it's not a numerical type of data, so it's unable to plot it. So why don't we actually go ahead and check the type of data types which are within our data frame? So by running df.dtypes, we're able to actually check each uh, data type of each column of data that we have. So the price USD column is actually of type object. So right off the bat, we know that that is not what we are looking for. Uh, for price USD, we would want that to be of type float. So we definitely have to change that. And that is a reason why we actually got this error. Another thing to notice is that we have three types of data, right? So we have the price uh, of Bitcoin in US dollars, we have time, and then we have date. Now, time and date, they're essentially the same thing. So we definitely need to get rid of one of them because it's obsolete data. You know, it's not data that we need. So I'm going to be getting rid of the date column and keep the time column. So the next line of code is actually restoring our data frame with only the time and price USD columns. So let's run that. So as you guys can see, our new data frame only contains time and price USD. But we still haven't fixed that error that we got because our price USD data is actually of type object instead of type float. So let's go ahead and convert that in from object type to float. So this line of code actually does that. So go ahead and run that. It makes use of the two numeric uh, method within pandas, which is able to convert object types into float or integer. Once you run that, let's go ahead and uh, just confirm and recheck all the data types which are in our data frame by running df.dtypes again. And as you guys can see, we have gotten price USD is now of, of type float. So that's great. And let's go ahead and use the plot method again to plot our Bitcoin price data. The X axis is making use of the time column in our data frame and the Y axis is making use of the Bitcoin price in US dollars. As you guys can see, our graph has now been plotted. So guys, this is essentially the initial first steps of, you know, retrieving data from APIs and actually visualizing it before actually making use of maybe a machine learning algorithm or some data analytics to actually uh, apply the data to. But this is the first step of any type of machine learning that you guys might be doing, you know, actually retrieving data and also visualizing it. So this is a great thing for you guys to learn. 
I hope this video was easy to follow along and let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section below. I'm planning on doing a lot more of these tutorial based videos and I hope this is really helpful for you guys, especially if you're trying to use the CoinCap API like I am. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next video.